for now. You heard me tell the story of my dear friend, Melo, the little girl, just eight or nine years old. Well, I got another letter from her. And the other letter, <clears throat> she said, I went to your lecture. And do you know, at the end of your lecture, you say, this little girl is Peter. And when I die, she will see the same king that she saw when I took her to France. And do you know what? At the end of your lecture, you took off your coat. <clears throat> but I didn't see you take off the coat. I saw you take off your skin. You took off your skin. And I could see right through you. And right behind you was the king that I saw in France. And do you know what? He was you. And next to the king was a tombstone. And on the tombstone was written the word Neville. And then he faded. And everything faded. And then I woke. Wasn't that incredible? And she spells the word incredible, credible, incredible. <clears throat> Reminds me of my little girl when she was four, and someone said, what does your father do? And she said, he is a lecturer. <laughs> and I have never heard the word lecturer, but what I think of Vicky and her word, a lecturer. And if someone gave us something, say, uh, for Christmas or something, and you couldn't find out what on earth is it? What is its purpose? And then mother would say, I wonder if it is functional. She couldn't pronounce the word functional, and she would say functional. Well, I have never heard the word functional since, but I think of functional. <clears throat> so if we get anything today that we can't quite understand what it is, which quite often at Christmas you get all kinds of things that you don't know. What on earth is it? What could you do with it? And so you put it in the gift drawer. Let someone else figure it out when you give it to them a year later. <clears throat> and here it is, and I think of functional. It isn't functional. Well now, she said, incredible. Isn't that precious? I have all her little letters now. But she saw the king. And she saw the tombstone, and she saw where that coat, which was only a symbol of the physical garment that was taken off. And here's the garment taken off and buried in that tombstone, and on earth it was called Neville. But beyond she saw the king, behold your king. And she said, and it was you, and then it faded. Wasn't that incredible? So I tell you, you are an infinite being, an immortal being. You didn't begin in your mother's womb and you do not end in the grave. You are forever and forever and forever. And you are that king. You will awaken one day and you will not be any less than the being spoken of in Scripture as Jesus Christ. There is only Jesus Christ in the world. There is only God in the world. And you and I will be one. One body, one spirit, one Lord, one God and Father of all. <clears throat> Let no one tell you because he precedes you in the awakening that he ranks ahead of you. No one ranks ahead, even though you precede the one in the order of awakening. For there's only one being who is awakening, and that one being is God. And God is your own wonderful human imagination. <clears throat>